stimulating conditions in the Wild West, uh, but there was also always a clear message, a regular narrative uh, format for the show, that progressive Americans controlled the wild conditions and advanced civilization. It was, after all, their, their manifest destiny. And of course, music contributed to this educational mission. They provided sound expressions of those same progressive values. The director and the musicians were always in control of, uh, of their sounds as they worked together in ensemble to create an atmosphere of cheerfulness, and uh, of a progression to a, a happy climax. Uh, Buffalo Bill's Cowboy Band provided music for the Wild West, of course, as bands did for other 19th century entertainments such as vaudeville and circuses and minstrel shows. Uh, but also was used to um, depict the various cultures that, uh, that were represented not only in the American West, but all over the United States, and ultimately through his Congress of Rough Riders of the World after 1892. Um, other cultures as well. The show featured in some years Hawaiians, Hawaiian cowboys, paniolas, or uh, gauchos, um, European cavalrys, even in a couple of years, cavalry from Japan. Uh, but most popular of all the exotic riders in the show were always the Cossacks. Uh, and in fact, there was a march written to uh, celebrate and to signify the culture in a musical way of the Georgian Rough Riders billed as the Cossacks of the Caucasus. This is the Marsh Rus, Russian March. Would have been right down front, you know. They would have been playing, and uh, but would have has been as loud as our modern uh, systems with amplification. Absolutely not. Uh, 
What that meant, though, that in order to be heard, the band would have had to play loudly. They would have had iron chops, uh, and circus bands would have been the same because that was a, in the 1880s, 1890s, uh, 1900s. That was the the high point for circus bands and outdoor shows in general. Um, you know, they'd been traveling through the 19th century, but you know, 1880s, 1890s, 1900s. Oh my, that was a huge prime time for all those outdoor shows. And so those band members would have been able to play loudly and they would have been able to play for long periods of times, two and a half to three hours. Uh, they called them wind jammers. There's even a, was a special name for all those guys who played at the outdoor gigs. In 1909, for financial reasons, Buffalo Bill joined forces with a former employee. It's a guy who had been a translator for the Pawnee Indians early in Cody's show years, a guy named Pawnee Bill Lilly. Well, Pawnee Bill had, had, had incorporated even more exotic acts in his show. Um, and in fact, the uh, show became known then as Buffalo Bill's Wild West and Pawnee Bill's Far East. <laughs> Inevitably, of course, uh, it came to be called the Two Bill Show. But uh, Pawnee Bill brought elephants and uh, oriental dancers and whirling dervishes. Um, in a way, at a time of huge immigration to America, the um, thought of e pluribus unum was becoming even more pluribus than it had been before, <laughs> uh, and the band will, uh, will exhibit that. But to celebrate this union of forces, uh, Sweeney, Bill Sweeney, the bandmaster, composed a march that featured multiple melodies, uh, as the show itself presented multiple leaders and uh, multiple cultural perspectives. Sweeney presents his audiences, an American polyphony that uh, celebrates the new American melting pot, a phrase which itself was coined in 1906. Uh, the Two Bills March features as many as uh, three different tunes moving in different shapes, rhythms, but always blending, harmonizing, and melding in their melodic conversation. Uh, Professor Masterson found this among the uh, Earl Evans archives at the Circus World Museum in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I want to toss that out. It's a wonderful archive. Uh, so here's a musical version of early 20th century America that engulfs audiences with its optimistic, cheerful spirit and really hard woodwind parts. Uh, that was inserted by the comment section. <laughs> It will be followed immediately by that other William Paris Chambers number we mentioned earlier, an homage to Buffalo Bill's Bandmaster and Sweeney's Cavalcade March. <laughs> 